welcome to another rendition, a Friday afternoon version of the b &H virtual event space. It's not often we bring you guys Friday content, but hey, it's nice out, it's the end of the week. We have something nice, creative and fresh. We got Amelie Satsker here. We're gonna be talking about getting creative with mobile photography, which is something I think we all need to work on. I think we, we get a little boring sometimes, right Amelie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you well, so much. We, all, you know, we, need, we need to spice up our work a little bit. So as you guys all know, um, feel free to drop questions and comments into the comment section on Facebook and we will get them asked, asked to Amelie. If you are joining us on Zoom, we do have the Q&A section open and Amelie is going to be doing a presentation for us. So feel free to drop the questions in and we'll get them plugged in either during the, the presentation or after. And Amelie, welcome. Is this, is this our first time having you? Have we had you before? Yes, yes. I, yeah, thank you so much for introducing me. And yeah, I actually wanted to speak at your place live in New York, but you know, because of coronavirus, it's not happening. So now I'm live here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk today about getting creative with mobile photography. And I just really quickly wanted to introduce myself so you know what who you are dealing with today. So my name is Amelie Zatzka. I'm a photo artist and art director based in Munich. I study photo design at the University of Applied Scientists like one and a half years ago, I finished my degree in bachelor degree. And after that, I applied for the Adobe Creative Residency, which is basically a scholarship from Adobe for a whole year. And I was lucky enough that I was accepted. So there are only a few people um, who get accepted. We were nine, nine in total um, for this year. And actually, basically what um, this scholarship is, is that you can um, you can create whatever you want for a whole year to get your own, like to get into this creative field and into your career. So whatever it is that you want to do, you can do during this whole year. And I obviously am a photographer and I did a personal project during this year. Um, you can see a couple of images down there where I was in the studio. Um, it's always really like creative in the studio. I built a lot of backgrounds myself. I also like create props myself. I really like to craft with my hands. Um, and I already had a couple of exhibitions. So I create this really colorful and poppy artworks. And you can see me in the middle at the top. Um, I had an exhibition in New York um, last year and two exhibitions in Paris um, over the last couple of years. And obviously I really like to give talks. So I had a couple of talks already at events and conferences and a couple of workshops. So that's about myself. Um, you can see here my artwork. So as I said, they're really colorful and poppy. Um, this was a project I did, which I called What is Reality? I visualized the thesis of um, the books from Stephen Hawking. So I read the grand design and a short, um, oh my God, <laughs> another book from Stephen Hawking. Um, I just forgot the name. Um, I brief, uh, whatever. Um, so I just visualized the thesis of Stephen Hawking into my own colorful surrealistic artworks. Another project I did um, for the Adobe Creative Residency is called Seeing Music. So I visualized lyrics from musicians and collaborated with the musicians. So the musicians are actually the people inside the artwork. So they came to Munich, we were together in the studio. I created all the props and beforehand and were like um, communicating with them about uh, concepts I wanted to create with them. So these are two images and they were all like, um, referring to some lyrics of the musicians. So this is a lyric, uh, a photo I created for a song from Oland. The song is called Love You Better and the lyrics are, I will love you better when I'm blind because you will always be a beauty living in my mind. And that was the image I was creating for that. Um, I also really enjoy to take self-portraits. Um, so these are all self-portraits I took in my city um, at colorful backgrounds. And you know, like if you hear self-portraits, you're instantly thinking about selfies, but that's not the case in my case. So I just really like to create really surrealistic artworks. I 
don't usually like it if you see my face or I like to transform like an actor inside of my images. Another series I did, and that's what I really, really enjoy to do is a 24 days challenge. So basically what I did is shoot one photo each day in December until Christmas, um, just to like get into photography or into my style a little bit more to like find a new way to creating because if you have like this huge project everything is really really strict and you have like this image and you work for this image for like one month and then you have one image turning out so i just wanted to have it a little bit more rough a little bit more fast and creative so i um did this 24 days challenge for myself and there are also portraits as well and basically i did pretty much the same during lockdown now I call the series quarantine and that's what I'm going to um, tell you a little bit more about because during this um, quarantine series I started to shoot with my iPhone. Um, I discovered a little bit more about iPhone photography and I'm gonna show you how I do it, like which apps I use, how my process is, etc. about this today. So what uh, like these are some images I shot on my iPhone during the lockdown series just to let you know what kind of images turned out and that's what we're going to do today. So I'm gonna show you or tell you a little bit about how I get my creative ideas because I think it's the most important thing is how to have this really creative idea, to have the concept behind it and what camera you use. It's not as important as the idea behind it, I think so, is my opinion. Then I wanna give you some tips and tricks on art direction, like on color contrast and composition. And after that, I want to talk to you about how I communicate my creative ideas, how I communicate with my clients, how I communicate on shootings um, and also with myself. If I have like really cool creative ideas, how I fix them and remember them for a later moment to be um, shot. Then, of course, I'm going to show you what equipment I'm using um, beside of my iPhone and what apps I'm using on my iPhone. Um, I use a couple of apps for shooting the image and of course also to edit the images and um, what one of my shoots look like really briefly. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that and then the different steps of editing an image on my iPhone because on an iPhone it's you have different apps which help you to do different steps and that's what I'm going to explain to you later on. And after that, just really briefly, like platforms that can improve your editing skills. So um, how do you get a creative idea? There are different ways and I think everybody has a different way to find a really good creative idea. Um, Everybody is creative in a different surrounding, but there are just like a couple of things that really help me. The first and I think really most important thing is Pinterest. Um, I think like the knowledge in your head and your brain um, to have like all these images you sometimes saw maybe in a museum, maybe sometimes somewhere on the internet is really, really important because like your brain is working differently. They, it is connecting like two different images and there is something new com coming out. So I really like to look at a lot of images, take them in and um, just collect them in like pin boards on Pinterest. So I'm really regularly searching through Pinterest, um, collecting these images I really enjoy. But I think what is really important is that you don't copy the images just to be inspired. Like, I, I don't want to copy any photographer. I don't want to copy any images exactly like they are, but I think to be inspired is really important. And that's what I mean by you look at the images, you take them in somehow, and maybe at another point you remember this image, but you can apply it to a pretty much different surrounding or to a different image idea. So that's really what helps me a lot to absorb all the different cool images and also paintings like I'm not only looking on at photos but also on old paintings from surrealists like Eni Magritte is one of my favorites so I really enjoy also going into the museum um, but especially on Pinterest in times like this. <laughs> also sometimes you know 
at a job like I have, or like many of you probably have, um, at some creative job, it's quite difficult to stay creative. Like you have to stay creative because you have to create on a really regular basis, but sometimes you feel like exhausted or not really in your creative mood. And what really helps me at that point is just to go for long walks. And the special thing about that is not taking like your regular walk around your neighborhood, but just going different streets or different paths where you maybe haven't gone really often because if you are in a different surrounding, you take in the your surrounding much, much more, yeah, you're much more aware of where you are and you see things really much differently than if you're walking to your supermarket and back again, you know, because you go there like every two days and that's not what you take in. But if I go on long walks, I try to be careful to go on different ways, like explore my neighborhood even more and just look around myself and take all in. And often there are some new things that I see where I get new ideas for new photos. For example, the first image I put in here, it's like a cemetery. It's really close to my parents' house. And actually this image happened when I was taking a walk around my neighborhood and I actually never went on the cemetery. But one time I did and then I saw like this military cemetery and I think thought it's really like sad, but also really beautiful, the structure of the tombstones and that's where I um, this image happened actually so I think yeah taking long walks really clears your mind but also gives you inspiration for new photos and um, the second image for example was when I was taking a hike so I really like to do day trips as well and there was like this river and it just it's it inspires me to be in um, different surroundings and a third image is while I was traveling to Iceland. Um, I really like traveling as well because of the same points I just pointed out. Um, because if you're traveling, it's a different culture. It's a different, maybe they have some, like their houses are in, built in a different way. And it really, you take it more in than if you are in the same country as you're living and everything looks similar as you're used to. But if you're traveling, you're more aware of your surrounding. And that's where actually the magic is happening, where there are new ideas coming to you, which maybe don't come to people living at the, that place, you know. So I was taking the one photo in Iceland while I was traveling. Um, one other thing I really regularly do, to be honest, is just if I, if I think, oh my, I don't feel really creative today and I just feel exhausted, I just sit in my room and just look around and think about what I can do with pieces or furniture around me, which maybe I haven't thought about yet. So for example, the first image was taken on my staircase um, leading up to my apartment. And one day I walked up there and I was like, actually, I think it could be a really interesting image at these stairs. Or the second image is, for example, in my kitchen um, with my boyfriend and all these bottles in front of him are is our oil and our vinegar, etc. And at one point, I just saw these bottles differently, and I removed like the paper and put like a light in front of it, so it was looking really mystical and really interesting. So I think just looking around your own room and just thinking of like furniture or plants and how you can use them differently for an interesting photo is a really great challenge, especially if you are in a lockdown situation. And other thing that really keeps me being inspired is listening to music. Um, as I told you, I was doing this C music project during my Adobe Creative Residency and I was always inspired by music. So if you listen to the lyrics of music, you find a lot of metaphor, met metaphors, and it really helps you to just find ideas which are not visualized yet, but you don't have to come up with these ideas um, yourself because they are already in this music. They are singing, singing images actually like they are singing metaphors which you can use and visualize as images and i use that a lot from the very beginning of my photography and i still 
um, really like to be inspired by music. So yeah, my suggestion would be just to listen a little more closely to the lyrics. And of course, um, being inspired by news can also be like one part. I think it's always important to follow the news um, worldwide and just to know what's going on because we are all like pe people in our time and I think I should always also reflect some kind of the happening of this time. So um, that's one thing where I get of course inspired as well, happenings of the world. And if you are a young photographer or if you are new in photography and you think you haven't found your style yet or if you just feel like oh i'm not getting nowhere i don't have i don't know really how to develop my style i think it's a really good idea to do like a little challenge for yourself as i did with my 24 days challenge I felt a little stuck and I wanted to develop more quickly and that's where I challenged myself to take one photo each day. And at the very, very, very beginning of my photography, like the first month, I challenged myself without knowing that this is even something I do on social media or something like this. I just did it for myself. That I challenged myself to take two photos each day and I did it for one month. I went out to, um, took two photos each day and after one month, I think it went down to one photo each day. And um, I was taking like one photo every second day, etc. But I think this is a good way because you keep on creating. And after maybe one week, you realize what you really enjoy to photograph. And after the second week, you maybe already have developed a little bit like your style. If you're a long exposure person, if you like black and white images more, or if you like really colorful images, etc. So I think to just keep on creating is a really, really important part of developing your style. Um, yeah. Then I want to give you some, just a little bit more inspiration because there are some rules or some things that probably everybody should know about um, and also help you creating even better images. So there's a couple of different color contrasts. Um, one of them is the contrast of you. Um, the contrast of you basically means that you have the three primary colors like red, um, yellow and blue inside of your image in the most saturated form. And this is an example of one of my images where I did exactly that and it creates like this really poppy and um, really primary image with primary colors. And I think that a lot of painters also did it in art. So you just should know that like these three colors create a um, contrast of you. Then probably already everybody have already known, heard about the complementary colors. <clears throat> so the complementary color of red is cyan, the complementary color of green is magenta, and the complementary color of blue is yellow. Like every color has its complementary color, if you know this color circle thing. Um, it's always the color on the opposite side. And that's why we have like these two um, color spaces, RGB and CMYK. And that's actually what I did exactly in this image. I have this house wall, which is in Suan. And I was thinking about which color I want to give the um, red, like the jumper the girl is wearing. And I was deciding red because it was a really nice complementary color contrast. Then there's um, another color contrast which may create really cool um, inspiring images, which is the warm cold contrast. Um, you can see in this image, I use it pretty well because I have all the fans which are in this really cold blue color and then there are two red fans. So the focus is actually on the red because they like stick out much more in all this blue. And I think like this contrast is a really nice, creates a really nice feeling for the viewer. Um, and other contrasts which may be interesting for you, um, which may be help you to create a cool new photo the next time you're shooting is a quality contrast. I didn't have um, the perfect image for that, but I hope you get my point with this image, like the coat is really saturated, um, which gives the viewer like which 
puts the focus on this coat and on a girl and the wall is in a less saturated way and that's actually what this quality contrast means that there's one color which is in a more saturated way and then the same color but less saturated maybe a little bit washed out etc and um what everybody should also know is that different colors awake different emotions for the viewer so for example red um awakes like excitement passion but also danger and green is like stands for nature freshness and growth so every color there are so many colors and all of them awake a different feeling for the viewer and if you have a client and if or if you're thinking about a shooting which should maybe stand for a really economic brand or nature etc you maybe think about like what color is awaking which feeling and use it in the right way just to be said and there's one tool i just wanted to quickly um um mention for you is adobe color it's a tool from adobe as the name says and it makes this really cool color palettes which you can use in all the um, adobe programs and i really like it because sometimes you have an image and you think wow i really like these colors in this image but maybe sometimes you don't really know which color to pick or something you can just upload this image and it just gives you a color palette of the most used colors in this image especially for colorblind people i think it's a really good thing um one friend of mine he's a designer and he uses it a lot because he can't um like see the difference between red and green so yeah this is a tool i really enjoy and i use quite often and there are some rules for composition which maybe help you to create a more interesting image and yeah for the few a more interesting image so there's the rule of third which basically means if you divide your image in three parts um, that the main subject should be on one of the lines as i'm on the one on the first line of the three uh, of the two sorry um yeah so it's just makes sense for the eye it's just something really geometrical which um, gives a really nice composition in your images um, another composition rule is centered in symmetry so i do it a lot as you probably saw in my images um, if you divide my image in two you see that the one half on the other half it's pretty much the same so that's what I mean with symmetric. And I think symmetric images are usually quite surreal or look a little bit surreal. That's probably why I use it a lot. And um, yeah, I that's just one thing um, you can be aware of your next composition, maybe. Um, one idea I wanted to give you is also frame in the frame, which means that you have a frame about your main subject or main happening. Um, it can be anything. You can go outside and there can be some kind of tree which makes a nice framing around your couple or your subject, whatever you want to shoot. Um, it can be, as you see in the first image, like a window frame. <clears throat> you can also, as I did in the at a fashion shooting, you can see it in the second image, like you just put a hole in a paper and just put it in front of your camera so it just puts like makes creates a really interesting image and you can try it the next time if you don't feel uninspired just to do a frame in a the frame then another thing are leading lines um if you have lines in your image i i really like to have lines in your image because the viewer automatically follows the lines but you should be aware of this um that the viewer is following the lines actually because you should have the lines coming together at the main subject or the thing you want to have to focus on you can see it on the second image on the pink image that i have like these four lines and they come together at my head so the viewer is following these lines and it automatically ends up at the main subject <clears throat> also lines give a more like deep image like they give depth in this image as you can see the first image that these little stones are getting smaller and smaller and therefore it just shows the viewer how deep this image is how far away it um, goes 
which is really cool as well with leading lines. Um, the last thing are patterns and texture. So I really love patterns and texture. Um, I really love to use them. So you can see at first image, I have all these tiles and they, they give a really nice catchy image. And at the second one, it's not that obvious because there are all these hats. Um, but at second glance, you see that they actually really create a structure as well. Um, yeah, so if you maybe feel a little bit stuck at your creation, the next time you can think of all these composition rules and maybe you get like a great idea for your next shoot with that. So now we have, um, do you have any questions, Derek, maybe? No, nothing so far. Okay, great. Um, so Dan, if you have your creative idea. Um, I want to talk to you about how to communicate your creative idea. So if I have a really huge shooting, I usually draw or paint my um, ideas first for me to know what I need as props and backgrounds, etc. but also for like the musician or the client I'm working with to know what they can expect out of the shooting. And I usually do it with my iPad now, like I have an iPad and I have an Apple Pencil. But before that, I was just painting it with normal paint on a paper. As you can see here now, that was for my um, What is Reality series. Um, so I think it's really important because often you don't have a really similar image, which is great because it's your original idea. But therefore, you need to give them an idea, the clients, how the image will turn out. So um, the only thing you can do is paint your idea or sketch your idea, or that's what I basically, like, yeah, what I figured out is the best way to communicate because paintings are like, it's, it doesn't, it isn't a language. You see it and you know what it means. And um, that's really helpful. And yeah, so I usually paint or sketch my um, ideas beforehand for bigger projects, but if I have like a normal self-portrait shooting here, um, I just do a little mood board for myself just to be sure that I have this idea clearly in my head. And um, for like fashion shootings, I also do like these mood boards, as you can see here, just to communicate with the fashion stylist or the hair makeup artist. Um, or like all the, the whole team, like the model that they know what they can deal with, like what, what is going on in the shoot. And um, mood boards are really, really helpful because I also use them um, for showing the fashion stylist what kind of fashion I would like. So I often, if I have a fashion shooting, I create a couple of different mood boards. Um, one, which is the most important about how I want the shoot to look like, what the mood is, what the colors should be like, and um, which is the main mood board. And then I have a couple of different mood boards, maybe for the fashion stylist, as I said, um, what kind of fashion I would like to have um, for the hair makeup artist, how my the hair makeup should look like for the model, how um, she should pose, what poses I think would be great. So um, I usually do a couple of mood boards for that. Um, let's go, what equipment am I using? So now we go into the core of this um, session. Um, so when I'm shooting here in my studio, I now shoot with my iPhone 11 Pro. So I have like an iPhone 11, um, which is really fancy. I know um, not everybody has an iPhone 11, but I think it doesn't really matter because I think every, like all the iPhone cameras are pretty good. The only good thing about iPhone 11 is because it has like three lenses, but it doesn't really matter. Like you, you can use your iPhone. I think the quality is, um, is always good. Um, then I have like in a tripod and remote. I bought it really cheap on Amazon um, just for 20 bucks. So it's affordable for everyone. But I think I really enjoy it. Like I really, I really think it's a good tripod and it already has like this remote control um, coming with the whole package. Um, it's a Bluetooth remote control um, and it, work, it works super well for me. Then I have like this basic studio lights. Um, 
These are also from Amazon, um, not super expensive. And I think the good thing about them are that they are in daylight um, temperature because I have a window over there and I don't want to, to have like different um, temperatures of light coming in. So um, they are daylight um, studio lights and yeah, I, I use them pretty regularly because my studio is super dark. Um, it's a north side, so I really use, I really need studio lights to shoot inside. And then I have like different colors of themeless background paper because my images are super colorful. <laughs> um, yeah, and what apps am I using on my iPhone? Um, first of all, for shooting, I um, use, it really depends on where I'm shooting. If I'm shooting outside, I, I think more often use the iPhone camera, like the regular camera, which comes on an iPhone. If I'm shooting inside, I think I use, yeah, I use definitely the Lightroom camera more often. So first of all, about the iPhone camera, um, it's a great camera, like it does a really, really good, good job. The thing what bothers me a little bit about it that you don't have the full control. So you can't control the exposure time, you can't control the ISO, you can't control the white balance. Um, the only things you can control, you can see over here is like the flash. And if it's really dark outside, you can change like the exposure time, but only from one second to three seconds i think you can change it from live mode uh, from live photo to not live photo you can change the size of the image turn or turn off the timer um do different filters or hdr but there's nothing you can where you can set like the white balance and what was the problem I often really often was that if i shot with the iphone camera here in my studio is that the white balance got really weird. Like from one second, it was really warm on the photo. From the other second, it was really greenish and like bluish. And if I have a couple of images and I want to stitch images together in the end, that's really a problem because then like the temperature, you can try to fix it, but it's not, it's not, um, yeah, it's, you can't do it as good as if it was already shot perfectly. So if I'm in the studio, I go on my Lightroom app and I shoot with my, um, you can go on this little symbol and you can basically open the camera with your Lightroom app. And over there you can, first of all, um, choose that you shoot in RAW, which is super good because on the iPhone camera, you shoot a normal JPEG, but if you open your Lightroom camera, um, you can choose between JPEG and DNG, and DNG is the raw format. And as I'm editing my images afterwards, and I'm changing often quite much, and very much, it's always really good to have the full range, like to have all the information in this image. Um, so yeah, I always shoot in RAW on the Lightroom app. And as you can see, if you turn on the pro mode down here, you can also change like the exposure. You can overexpose your image. You can underexpose your image. You can change the exposure time. Um, you can change the ISO of the image and you can set the white balance. And that's really helpful. Like I use, that a lot and that's actually the reason why I'm shooting with Lightroom camera. The apps I'm using for editing are all of these. Um, the first three are from Adobe and are included in the Adobe Creative Cloud. And the fourth one is for free, like Snapseed is for free and Afterlight is, um, you can buy it or get a subscription for it. Um, yeah, so I think there are a couple of good free apps. I have the Adobe Creative Cloud, so I just directly went on the Photoshop Mix and Photoshop Fix as they are really intuitive for everybody who already have used Photoshop before. But I'm sure they're like a Snapseed. I really enjoyed Snapseed as well. A really good app and Afterlight as well. So how does one of my shoots look like before we go into this editing process? Um, 
yeah, basically, it's not really difficult. I'm standing in front of one of my colorful backgrounds, <laughs> as you can see over there, or I'm sitting in front of my colorful backgrounds. And I have my two studio lights. One is the key light, which comes from the side where the window comes from, because the window, of course, um, also gives light. So this is my main light. Um, and then I have another light from the other side, maybe sometimes a little far away, which is the fill light which just pulls up the shadows on the other side because I really want to have a really soft and regular lighting. I, I'm not one of the photographers who have like this really, really hard lines in the face or something like this. So I really like a really soft lighting because then I can edit my images um, in the best way afterwards. So this is how I'm shooting. You can see down here, I have my tripod I have these weird apples on my head and I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm editing this image now, like which steps I use to um, create this final image um, only with my iPhone. So my first step usually is, um, do we have any questions there, maybe? We actually had a question going back to your equipment, which tripod yeah. was it that which you mentioned? Tripod? Right? Yeah, which it's, tripod do you use? Um, it's just, I, I, it's not a brand or anything. So it's just basic. I think I put in like iPhone tripod in Amazon. It's like the first one coming up. It's, it's super cheap, like $20 or something like this. But I can't tell you any brand because I think it's no, no brand or anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any tripod does the job. I, any tripod, yeah. <laughs> it's it's just like a really basic tripod. I think um, anybody will find it if they type in like iPhone tripod in or mobile tripod in Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so the first step is that, of course, if I shot with my Lightroom camera, my all my photos are already in the Lightroom library. Um, if I shot it on with the iPhone camera, I just import it in Lightroom because Lightroom is always my first step. I do my basic corrections in Lightroom. There are a couple of things you can do. As you can see, you can change the light, the color, you can put on effects, you can um, make details like make it sharper, etc. Change the optic, um, which is quite helpful sometimes because now with the iPhone 11, you have like these three lenses and sometimes they're like, lens distortion so you can um you can change it with the optics um you can have the geometry um healing brush crop and selective brush so there is actually the full range what you can do um to get your image right so you can see these are the for like how the image came out of the camera and that's what i did in lightroom as a first step it's super basic I just um, arranged the colors a little bit, the light, and a tiny bit of the healing brush, as you can see down here um, in the shirt, because there were some crinkles. Um, yeah, so it was, it's super basic at the beginning. I just want to have the light right. I want to have like the, the colors a little bit more saturated, but the second step is the most important one, I think, because that's when I put my images into Photoshop Mix um one of the editing apps i talked about and i stitch these images together and what i really love about photoshop mix is that you can put 10 up to 10 layers on your image so it's pretty much like photoshop you have different layers you can cut them out um there are sadly no masks in there but you can cut it out and you can bring it back as well if you like paint in there as well um at the cut out um tool down there you can actually have like an automatic cutout or like a really rough cutout and then you can paint with a brush as well so it can be really detailed and really accurate actually and also as you can see here in my layers there are two layers which are only a colored layer so <clears throat> so you can bring in colored layers as well and then put them on a different blending modes and that's what i usually do so that's what i did here you can see I put two apples on my hat um, and I created this a little bit more greenish background. You can see that I changed 
And how I did that is I created these two colorful layers. I um, put them in different blending modes and turned down the occup, occup uh, like uh, it, it faded out a little bit. <laughs> I'm not a native speaker, I'm sorry. Um, so I put them in a light um, um, blend mode in an, and in a dark implant mode. And I cut out my head and my body so they are not effective, uh, affected by these layers. So that's how I created this effect. So the background looks more colorful and more smooth, etc. And there are a lot more you can actually do in Photoshop Mix. So you can adjust, you can put looks on it, you can cut things out, as I just said, you can blend, um, you can upright, you can shake reduction full, but the only two things I ever use is actually cut out and blend, and of course all the lay all the layers which are really helpful, I think so. So um, do you have a question, Derek? Nothing. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh, we did. Nope, we're good. We got an answer. OK. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, so the step three after that is sometimes, not all the time, I bring in the images to Photoshop Fix. Photoshop Fix is actually an app where you can remove and add items really, really well. You can liquefy and transform your image. So basically, at this image, I didn't do much. So you can see I just fixed um, the crinkles in my shirt a little bit. It's just a really tiny correction. But really often, I had problems that I maybe just shot myself until here. And then I wanted to expand the image, and I had like something where it didn't have any image for that. So I could expand that really, really well with Photoshop Fix. Um, there are different tools, like the stamp tool, you have the healing brush, and a couple of different tools as well, um, which really help you to create and um, to expand or remove your items from your image. So I just removed these crinkles in this image but um, you can do much more. What I don't like about Photoshop Fix, to be honest, is, is that you don't have layers. So you don't have a layer where you can see the single steps that you did and you can't like put in any image or something like this. So whatever you do on your image, it's just fixed kind of, it's on one layer. Um, so you have to be kind of careful what you are doing in Photoshop Fix. So after I fixed all the crinkles on my shirt, I brought the image um, back to Lightroom to step four. And that's what I usually do. You see now I have the base image, like that's how I want the comp composition to be like. I have everything in place and now I can just be creative and draw with the selective brush. So the thing I do the most in the end is just paint with a brush and you can see that's what I did. Um, for example, I um, you can see here as well, one second. Here, when you go on the brush um, on selective, you can choose between radial gradient, normal gradient or the brush gradient. And I usually do the gra brush gradient and you can also choose what effects this, this brush has. So you can choose what, if it's like, brighten the image up if it's um, if it's, it puts more shadows in if you have like a different temperature and that's what I actually did with the shirt I had the temperature to a little bit warmer and more greenish and that's how I turned this shirt really green you can see it here then I had another brush so you can have different brushes and I had another brush where I have the brightness a little bit up and I painted inside of my face and on the apples. And then I had a brush where I put the brightness a little bit down and I painted inside the image. So that is super, super helpful. I really love Lightroom for this um, feature, which just make my images to the final result as I wanted them to be. So in the end, I don't change much of light. I don't change much like the final, the base image already exists, but I want to have like these little, little details. For example, I um, painted my lips a little bit more red and stuff like that. So this is, um, the, that were the first two images and that's what I created out of them all on my iPhone. Are there any questions, Derek? 
Yeah, we did have a question come in regarding um, your lighting. So are you using continuous lighting or do you use strobes that are fired from like a like an app? Um, no, like I, I have um, I have these steady like continuous lighting, um, like my studio lamps, which are no flash. They, they just like, um, how do you say? Like continuous, yeah. Okay, so continuous yeah. lighting. And, and as far as the iPhone, is it, um, someone asked about storage space. Is this taking up a lot of storage with yeah. all the apps and the saving, saving these projects? Yeah, to be honest, that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's a little annoying because I'm shooting quite often with my iPhone and I always have to like sort out the images and just make sure that some of them are already somewhere in like iCloud or some at some space and like my iCloud is kind of full now. So I have to like arrange the storage again. So yeah, that's kind of a problem, but I have an iPhone with quite a lot of storage. Um, which helps the whole issue, but you always have to figure out how to do it, to be honest, to have like some cloud space. You also have space at Adobe Creative Cloud, so um, that helps a little bit, but it's limited as well. So it's yeah. not endless. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I think photographers, if, if you're a photographer and you're getting an iPhone, if you go anything less than 128 gigs, yeah, yeah. You, you really have to figure out how to do it. You have to like put them somewhere on your hard drives or something. So, but it's exactly. like, you know, it's, it's similar to a normal camera at some point it's full as well. So you have mm -hmm. to. And, and with the editing. So it's one thing, I guess, if you're on a, a, um, a tablet and you're using a pen yeah. or, you know, if you're on your phone, especially for people who might have larger fingers. Yeah, um, I, I had how, a problem as well. <laughs> yeah, like, like how, precise, how precise can you get as far as, you know, are you, because I know how some of these tools, you have to really pinch and zoom and zoom and zoom. And then, you know, you're trying to make these yeah. little corrections. Is, do you find that that's a skill or is it something that a problem you even run into? Do you have to then take them into a computer no. process? I like um, I had the same problem as well, and I was complaining about it with my own, like with my boyfriend, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I got this pen at some like some advertising thing. Like I have this pen, and it has like this like this thing on the back, and with this you can actually paint really good on your iPhone. It's like you're painting with your little finger, like it has kind of the size of your little finger, but you are not doing this all the time, you know." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually painting with this pen most of the time and it costs like I have 10 pens of this now and it costs like seven euros on Amazon so it was oh, super wow. cheap. yeah so right. you can maybe you have something like this lying around at home as well and I actually never used it and I never had it on my mind before but then like my boyfriend gave me this and I was like well, this is working super well. It's a game changer. So there. Yeah, so, really changer. so for whoever asked that question, yes, get a um, yeah. get like a tablet pen or a pen that will work on the iPhone. Yeah, it's, it's and you'll just get more like precise it's, editing. It's not on the end. It's it's nothing special. <laughs> so. Yeah, I actually I, I did wonder that myself because I'm looking at some of the stuff you're doing and I'm like, yeah. it's one thing if you're just working with sliders, but once you get yeah. into like actual clone stamping and and removing it's, stuff and yeah. adding stuff it's it's difficult yeah that's really a game changer i i tried it with my finger before and it's just like you can't even see what you're doing with your finger because you're blocking the few with your finger exactly that's so yeah, exactly that's what i'm doing so yeah back to the presentation um these were the two first images um and that's what turned out obviously <laughs> so um I hope that helped you a little bit. And just to round it up, I just wanted to bring your attention to a couple of platforms, which I just recently or in the last year figured out that they existed. And I think they're a good start for everybody wanting to like get into editing or photography. So one thing which I think is really cool for everybody who is really new into photography is this tool, which is on the Lightroom app as well, which is called Learn. It's a section. And actually there are a couple of tutorials from professional photographers and you can go on this tutorial and it actually tells you step-by-step step what the photographer did, why he did it. And then you can follow along step-by-step. Um, step. It shows you what you have to do 
And actually, as you can see, I'm doing like tutorials there now as well. Um, I haven't uploaded any of them yet. This is just like an example of mine. But I think I tried a couple of them out and I think it's really good to just get into this right mindset to know what is important and what different tools exactly do. And um, just to see how a professional photographer would edit their photos. So it's really good insight. I wish I would have, have had it when I started with photography. And another one I really enjoyed recently is um, online courses. Um, one platform is Skillshare. And there are a couple of platforms, there are just two I wanted to introduce you to now, which is Skillshare and Udemy. Um, Skillshare is like, um, you have to have a subscription, so you pay a monthly subscription for it, and you have all these courses um, where people explain really detailed to you how they edit stuff, and it's like all different kinds of designers, so they're not only photographers, but also illustrators, UX designers, filmers, whatever, but um, I think it's really good to get a little bit of knowledge from them, and I really enjoy looking at some courses because they are also some of my favorite photographers on there and um, on Udemy you buy each course um, whatever course you would like to have and they are also like really awesome courses most of them are like two or three hours long and really in-depth um, information of how to edit stuff um, so they're just like two things that I found really good lately, which also really helped me to get into fields where I didn't have that much knowledge as in photography. So I just wanted to let you guys know. And um, are there any more questions? Probably not, right? No, not right now. <laughs> you, you knocked it out. Usually it's like when there's not that many questions, it's with something like this, people want to know what exactly you're using. To, yeah. to get these you know when you see results like that i i couldn't get that yeah. i can't get that i can't get that on my macbook that those kind of results you know with uh with professional you know i can use professional cameras and and a macbook and i can't get those kind of results so um actually we just did have another another question come in yeah. um let's see okay so when you do tutorials mm -hmm. and you're showing people the processes that you're doing on your phone. Is there any technology or app that you know of that actually shows the where you're clicking on the screen or is it something where you would just have to have an actual camera recording the screen? Do you get what I'm... So if yeah, I'm... Uh, on an iPhone or on any other on device? A, on an iPhone. On an iPhone. Um, I, I don't um, found anything yet, but that's a really good point. I think what I would do is probably film myself, like the phone from behind somehow, and also like screen, like make a screen video of what I'm doing and then I can combine it so that people actually see what I'm doing. It's possible to do it at least at some apps of the iPad I know. For example, Photoshop on iPad, I did a course about that and you can, put in that they actually see where you're typing. So there's like this blue dot wherever you put your finger or your pen on, but I haven't found anything on the iPhone yet. But I'm, I, I, I think I, you have to search for it probably for any app which shows that. So yeah, I yeah. don't think there's anything no. I know of. Yeah, the right because the regular screen, the screen record on the iPhone doesn't give you yeah. The ability to show what's being like a, like a highlight you know if you click yeah, on something yeah. highlight it so people can see what you're clicking on yeah nothing yeah. i know of so <laughs> no what <laughs> that that was great um i mean what do you have what's your future your future plans i mean if you're if you're looking at you know down the line is there something that you can see yourself is it you know moving into just steadily like a uh an art director capacity do you still want to create on your own? I think right now I'm quite happy how it is going because I was hired a couple of times now for like things where I can actually all also choose what the creative idea is behind the, the whole thing. So I can actually um, have the idea, think about like any theme I wanted to, or like the theme is fixed, but I can also um, like pitch my creative ideas and create 
um, things with that. So that's actually where I'm really happy about. And I think in the future, I would really like to move to New York. <laughs> but that's just something really <laughs> basic. So yeah. Um, that's just something about my location, which doesn't really matter about my photography career, but that's just one thing I have in my mind for the future and just keep continuing my self portrait things because I never thought that I could actually make money out of that, but it's going pretty well. So it's, um, it amazed me myself that actually the things I really enjoy to do in my free time is now becoming a real career. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're, you're getting paid to do something you love which yeah. is always it's always the goal it's like the blur that line between work and and play um we question on the sessions that you do so are you having any assistance like is your boyfriend helping you or do you have a crew of people is this mostly you doing it yourself um it's always me doing not not always it depends on how big the shoot is but usually it's me um like nobody helping um which is kind of sometimes a little bit lonely because you know being in the studio yourself all day long but i also enjoy it because there's no pressure behind it um at bigger shoots like the thing i did for um what is reality and seeing music like this these projects are where team like i i created all the ideas i pitched it to all the people but there were a lot of people involved in the whole pro process like there was a team behind it a filmer um, assistants and models etc so there were a couple of people but if I do my self portraits it's always me my tripod and my camera <laughs> okay and are you using are you are these images being taken off of is it just digital images are you printing these or any other kind of medium um yes like I had these exhibitions where like these images were printed really large in the galleries which was really awesome because I never thought that they would make it into a gallery and then they were hanging there in Paris and in New York and I was like oh my that's my image <laughs> but else yeah it's it depends on the client you know so if they want to have it in a magazine or something of course it's getting printed but usually it lives online and you haven't seen anything because I know we always hear about the more images are digitally manipulated and edited it can degrade the the quality of the image and you haven't had any issues obviously with anything like no, that. No, not really. Um, I was really surprised of the quality with my iPhone to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, if I have like huge projects like with what is reality and see music, I was collaborating with phase one and I had a phase one because I wanted to have it really in crisp. Like I wanted the possibility to be there that it's going to be printed on really large scale, you know, mm -hmm. so I had it um, yeah, shot within phase one. But I don't see a problem, to be honest. I think that the iPhone does really good quality and also my camera, so yeah. And we had a question about the pens that you're using. Mm -hmm. How particular is it? I know I, know I tried to get a, a pen, mm -hmm. this was years ago, and it was a pen that was for Samsung and I didn't realize it and it didn't work on my iPhone. Have they changed things since then? Or is a pen that works on an iPhone 11, is there any difference between the models or? Like it's uh, a usual pen, like you can write with this pen. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Like it's it's a usual pen, you can write with this. Oh, that's not even like a digit, no, that's no. not even like a tablet pen. No, and no, here I am. no problem, it's just I'm a usual like, pen. <laughs> I'm thinking like, cause I have, I have, you know, yeah, I know. I was on tablet, so and I haven't found any. So I was at one point I was just disappointed, and then my boyfriend was like, "Oh, try out this one." And it was just a regular pen, and it has like this weird knob on the end, and it's just ah. working. It well, was jo working perfectly for me. Joe, <laughs> there you go. Jo <laughs> Joe, go buy a twenty pack of Bic pens and see if they. <laughs> now I'm not endorsing that. No, I mean if you go on like Amazon or any website, you, you can type in, um, you know, pen, iPhone pen. No, and no, we just right. Um, how was it called? It has like a name, but I've already forgot it. Like um, pen um, with like this um, gummy knob on the end or something like this, you know, like this, this weird knob on the end. Can you see it? Does it have like, is, it's like, like rubber? Yeah, it's like rubber rope, yeah. Okay. Like, it's just weird. I I have 
found okay. a name, uh, but it was quite difficult, so I forgot it already. I'm sorry about that. No, no. You know what? I think I actually have one of those too. It's like yeah, a like I it's like a little like a little rubber cushion. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. has like a hole in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um and and so Zoe Zoe just asked, is it a stylus? No, so it's not a stylus. It is. Yeah. I'm I'm almost positive I have one here. It's it's a regular <laughs> pen that you can write with, and on yeah. the back side of it, it has like a little rubber cushion. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna have to try to. I'll find that out and see if I can find like an actual an actual brand or product so we can you know maybe in the future have yeah. a better a better answer for that. Um, now, as far as your export settings, are you doing anything settings wise? Are you is there a particular format that you're saving in? Are these PNGs or? That's a really good question. I actually wanted to mention that during the process. I usually export it from Lightroom at the beginning um, in TIFF because I really want to have it in the best quality. I put it in the highest quality, etc. cetera. Um, and I think at Photoshop Mix and uh, in Photoshop Fix, you can't really select what kind of export um, format you want to have. And I think it's usually JPEG, but I usually try to import and export it to the next app so it's not on my camera roll so it's just exporting it into the next app and from the app into Lightroom again which is most of the time possible um, so I try to just decrease like the quality loss um, with this process and in the end it depends on where I want to use it so if I want to print it it's of course some TIFF version or I will export it first of all in TIFF but if I want to have it on social media I just I do JPEG as usual. Okay and I, I did while you were answering that question I did just um, so Zoe if you google pen with <laughs> stylus it'll pull up a bunch of stuff and it, like like uh, Amelie said it's a regular pen that you can use to write on paper and on the other end, it'll have the little stylus tip. So if you just Google pen with stylus, it'll pull up a bunch of uh, a bunch of options. Yeah, and it's really it's they're just really cheap. They're usual regular pens, and I got like this in like a ten a pack of ten, and it was like mm -hmm. seven euros or something. So it was super cheap. Okay, now going back to the the picture of you with your with your head in the clouds. Yeah. Um, we had a question about how you created that. How I created that. <laughs> um, so I um, was here in my studio <laughs> and I was shooting like along the um, wall. And after that, I imported it into, um, into Photoshop Mix. I created like this blue background um, and ch just cut me out, of course, again. And I also had like some photos of um, clouds and I um, put them in like I am, had the clouds beforehand in Lightroom and I put them in black and white. I made the highlights really high and the shadows really, really low because you have to understand the blending modes before you use the blending modes. Um, so one of the blending modes is the screen blending mode and it actually only shows all the bright parts of the image and all the dark parts um, got get erased kind of. So what I wanted to do is get the blue sky around the clouds really, really dark and get the clouds really, really bright and black and white. Um, and then I imported them into my Photoshop mix in, uh, in to Photoshop mix. Oh wait, beforehand, I also in Lightroom, I did this perspective thing. So it has like this perspective of, of the clouds. I imported it in um, Photoshop Mix and then I put this blending mode on it, like the screen blending mode. And yeah, and after that, I imported it again into Lightroom and then I could draw with, um, with my pen these pretty good lines. So, and did the shadows, etc., as I did on the Apple photo, so yeah. It's, it's a little bit more difficult than the Apple photo because you have to know the blending modes before you um, can get a good photo because you have to like prepare the cloud images before you can um, they give a good effect in the blending mode, if you know what I mean. So yeah, but it's not that difficult. It's actually doable. <laughs> <laughs> says says Amelie, we're all gonna try this. I'm gonna go try this later today and it's gonna look horrible. 
So how, how long did it take you to get where you are now? How long have you been doing this kind of work? Um, around six years now. Like I started when I was 19, I'm 25 now. Um, but you have to know that I started with Photoshop when I was 12. So I got my first Photoshop version when I was 12 and I was actually in editing before I was in photography, which, which is kind of weird, but um, yeah. I, when I was I, looking at your looking at your sketches, you can tell that you have you're yeah. you're an artistic person. You're a very <laughs> talented artist. So, and I think that that works into the the creative mindset of you know your storyboarding images. You're putting together mood boards, and yeah. you're able to actually sketch out your ideas. Whereas somebody like me who has limited drawing skills, I could try to sketch something out like this, but it's not really creating a strong visual guide for me. Yeah, but also I think it's also really good like to communicate. It just has to tell people what was your idea, how to like where the person standing, etc. But of course, it helps if you have like some drawing skills and to be more precise. See how humble she is. See how could you, you know, how could you not love that? She's so humble. We'll we'll tell you, uh, you know, on behalf of everyone who's watching, super talented. It was a, a very creative, interesting presentation. Yeah. Your work is beautiful. Thank you so, for having me. <laughs> now, we, look, we thank you for coming on. Make that move to New York. You will yeah. not be disappointed. And then we can get you live in the event space. And we can, we can you know, finally get that non-virtual, live in-person presentation from you. I would love that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Amelie, thank you again. On behalf of the entire Event Space crew, uh, it was a definite ple pleasure and joy to have you on. On behalf of all of our viewers, I'm sure they, they appreciate it as well. To everybody out there watching in the virtual world, thank you for tuning in. Um, so that's a wrap for us. It's Yay. the weekend. <laughs> Thanks so now much. We, now you're welcome. You are welcome back anytime. Everybody go enjoy your weekend. It looks like it's going to be a nice one. So Amelie, thank you so much again. Thank you to all our viewers.